Judith Yates. I'm going to give you a demonstration of a close-up of a wild splashing wave and I'm going to show you a few really nice easy techniques that are very effective showing light shining through and then techniques with the brush to keep action and movement to keep that um, excitement really of being there by the sea. It's going to be a little snippet of ideas and inspiration that's in my new book, Dynamic Seascapes, which was published recently by Search Press. So, here we go. I've got um, a large piece of mount board. I like it as a surface to work on, but there's many different surfaces. We'll go with this for now. It's quite strong and resilient, and it can take lots of water and lots of layers. So first off, you just very lightly draw in a big main wave and you're trying to get the movement so you know that when you're laying your marks down they can follow these movements and add to that dynamic feel. So this wave is curving over and breaking and that's going to be the, the main action in the picture. And I'm wanting it to look quite tropical and clean and bright and as they can see through into the underneath so I'm thoroughly wetting the paper with the spray but you can also flood on water with a big brush and I need to keep it wet and moving because that's the way that this particular technique works so really make sure that it's wet if it starts to dry out it won't work so it's important to flood this on and I'm going to use quite bright colours phthalo blue just flooding it on, you can make marks. It's going to completely change when I add this, uh, this technique. So quite rich Mediterranean. Thalo blue is a beautiful, bright, almost a turquoise. It's phthalo blue, green tint this. So I'm just flooding those on. Then bits of bright yellow. I can take this all up today, even though I'm going to come on with the foam. So it's getting brighter towards the top, which waves do when light's shining through. So I'm going to go deeper towards the bottom and I'm going to use indenthrine blue, but it's similar to Prussian, it's, it's quite an unusual name, but actually Prussian blue is absolutely fine. So that it changes and goes darker where it would be in shadow. So very quickly you've got to get your methylated spirits and drop little bits onto here. And you can see it makes quite an interest. You have to be quick because as I say if it starts to dry this won't work. But it starts to look, and we will go over with glazers, but it starts to look like all sorts of little things. It could be lichen, it could be light shining through water. It seems to represent all kinds of things. You can draw with this and make lovely shapes. Fantastic. And then when one colour merges with another, it does lovely things as it pushes the acrylics away. So you can see, even though it was very dark at first, you're now getting all this. We are going to work over this, so don't forget. It's just a background. So you can add tiny little bits like this and as it starts, if it's too wet it looks fantastic but then it starts to flood back on itself. So you do have to get it, I suppose, sheeny wet rather than drippy wet because it will push it away and then it will start to come back. But as you watch it dry, watching paint dry, you can just add little bits more where you think you'll need it. And as I say, as I put glazes over this, you'll see how interesting it is as it peeks through the glaze and still shows these little marks of glimmer and depth through. So we'll leave that to dry now. Now this is all dry, before I work on top of it I'm just going to do a little bit of background. Now we've gone so close into this wave that there isn't going to be a skyline, we're just looking at the sea drifting away. So I'm going to do a mid-toned blue, mixing ultramarine, phthalo, a tiny little bit of raw sienna just to warm it up, and a little bit 
of burnt amber because I want to knock the colour back. I don't want this to be shining really bright because it's going into the background and it needs to recede. And now I'm going to change onto a smaller brush just to do a few little tiny suggestions of flipping waves. So I'm going to do an even darker version using indanthrene blue, a little bit of ultramarine, a tiny bit of white and a little bit of that umber. And I'm just going to kick in little suggestions of shadow of waves and all you need to do is little flicks like that. It's almost like little archers because you, as I say, you're not doing detail. It's just a suggestion of some movement back there. And half of this you're not going to be able to see because all this is going to be splash and foam on top of it, but it wants to act as a backdrop. It's just that there's movement and some sort of sway. It's not just totally flat. So now I'm going to glaze over this because I know that I want some depth down here because this is the depth of water. This is where it's rearing up so it needs to be light because the sunlight's coming through it. So I'm going to put some of this bright phthalo blue mixed with ultramarine and you can see how nicely it glazes over the whole thing and just takes it all down. A little touch of burnt umber and a little touch of sap green will give it that lovely warm infused glow and see how it you can see all the details still, but you're just using a very soft glaze. And the glaze is basically just lots and lots of water added to the acrylic paint, but not touching the white. So you're adding little bits, you're darkening that up so that you've got a really rich, wet mix. And then you see where the shadow would be. So the shadow would be here, and you can suggest that wave shape as you're making these tones. At the same time, I'm just getting rid of some of that. You can suggest the wave being pulled up and it gives a feeling of it rearing up. And this would be where the light can't get, so that's in the depths because we need to do work on top of this. And if these are too bright, they're going to be shining out and you won't get that feeling of, of deep ocean. And that's that. You don't have to go mad, you still need to be able to see underneath. And it's quite fun, you can play with these tones over all this uh, technique and it does some really beautiful things. If I add a kind of um, lovely warm raw sienna towards here, you'll see how that it gives a subtlety to all these undertones that you've done. And it also suggests light shining through. But what I am going to do up here, where the light will be shown more, I'm going to mix a really lovely pale mix of cadmium yellow pale, a little bit of phthalo blue, and I'm trying to get a really beautiful, bright, kind of like a turquoise, but where the sun's shining through, it's a little bit of a yellower turquoise, so a paley green. And why I'm doing that, I want to do it here, where the sun would be shining through at the top of the wave. And I also want to do it here. Now why I'm not doing it here, this is all going to be foam as it's coming over. So I'm just doing it where we're still going to be able to see. And I'm just almost dry brushing that. So you load your brush up and then you take some of the paint off on the tissue and that leaves you with a dry brush effect so that you can get a lovely soft glaze down like that. And I'm going to do it here and I might need a little bit more of that. Do it bit by bit because you don't know until it's on how bright it's going to be. So you can just pull it down, that movement in the wave. And I'm going to go even brighter. So that means adding more white to the mix. Tiny bit of yellow again, tiny bit of phthalo blue. And then coming even brighter from the top. So that's where the water's very, very thin and the light really is shining through. Now that will help. Once you've got all the foam on, that should be all right. You can add more to it, but it's just going to give it that gleam right near the top. And as you can see, if it's too much and you're getting a hard line, take some of it off, 
dry brush it and you're just dragging those bristles across the surface and some of that half dry paint is coming off giving you that lovely blur lovely gradation of tone from one to another right so really we're ready for a bit of foam detail before I start with the foam I'm just going to suggest light hitting some of this water down here because of course it's not totally flat it's churning and undulating and being pulled up the face of the wave now to do that I'm going to suggest the reflected sky because of course whatever the sky is doing it's reflected in the flat surfaces of the water and you can see it rearing up and just like before I'm going to use a semi-dry brush to suggest this so I'm mixing ultramarine with white and getting rid of some of that and I'm just suggesting as you can see little bits of light hitting some waves down here and it's going to be churning and moving around and kicking up and I don't want to do too much because I don't want to cover up all this work that I've done that suggests looking into the sea but I just need to show in little patches and I might need to have a little bit more ultramarine because on top of this I'm going to have some foam so this is just saying Right, the sea surface is moving around and the light's just catching it as it kicks up. So you just need to do a few of these. And it's going out towards one edge because the sea's been pulled up at the same time as chopping. So if you just get that suggestion in. And we're really going for all this, this sort of vigorous movement and sway. The challenge is to try and do it and keep all your brush marks fresh and vigorous and try and get something of that feeling of motion it's tricky but we do we do like the challenge and then we're on to some of the foam and the foam will come forward and as we do the foam we're going to rise up over these which is going to suggest that movement even more now there's a few ways of doing foam and you can stipple it you can splash it so many different ways, but I have some of my favourites. This is what I'm going to use. I'm going to use my favourite spatter brush, which I love. I'm going to use a toothbrush and I'm going to use a hard old brush. Now with this old brush, it's great because you can make little marks. So I'll fill it with white. As usual, I don't want it purely like that. It's probably going to be too hard for this. I'm going to sort of almost dry brush it and you can scrub it on like this, you can hear how hard these are but it makes quite nice marks. Now this is, as it's coming over like that, this is where all this foam's kicking up. Now I'm not going to just leave it like this, I'm going to do lots of different things. I think the more different techniques you can make on foam, the more realistic it looks because it's never just one sort of texture. I'm going to add some blue because, on to, as I said, on top of that, the only pure white is going to be the final. So it's going to look quite strange at the moment because I'm describing the, um, the foam in shadow, which, of course, it's just like snow. Any white foam in shadow is going to be blue, bluey purple, bluey purple with a little bit of brown, so it goes towards the greys. So here we go. This is mixing in with the white. This is just the base, and it's going to be coming foamy down here and down here. And then it's going to kick over. It's never regular, it just breaks at all different points along that way. It comes over, and then it's back here, and then it'll be flying off here, which we'll do with these other techniques after. It's just a matter of building up all this interest and mass and try and get some of that energy into it, how it breaks. Another thing is to use a palette knife, flat on it, I'm just getting my palette knife. Now to do this, you need to, again, wipe some of it off. So what I'm doing is, I'm scooping up the white on my palette knife, so that it's flat against the knife. It might seem wasteful, that might matter. 
It might seem wasteful, but what I then do is wipe some of it off back and pick that up again later. So it's almost a semi-dry palette knife because you can then make these wonderful foam effects. Now, it's not going to be pure white because it's showing through. I'm going to just scrape that off, but you don't have to worry about things like that. This is a tip I ought to give at this point since I've made that mistake. Always keep, like I didn't then, a wet rag handy in your left hand, or your right hand if you're left-handed, so that if you do make mistakes, you can wipe away like that. But this is going to be all splash over here. So that's the tip that it really is going to make you not worry too much about these quite dramatic techniques because you can just go, oh, I don't like that, I'll get rid of it. So again, we're going for energy. So these are quite bold techniques because that's where you get the energy. So these, this will kick off in certain areas like this, but I know I'm going to do loads of splashes, so it's going to work perfectly fine. And this is a kind of greyed white, it's not pure. So here again, this is going to be coming over, really dry it. You can get some of these little flips over like that. So that's one technique with the splash, and that's made that massive wave. If you want to go darker in the shadow, just pick up some dark with your palette knife and go on top with the blues. Because all these blues mix with a little bit of brown, mix with white, sometimes mix with a bit of purple, all just look like shadow. Again, I'm getting some of that off. You see, as you add it, a little bit around, it's very dry underneath here and it's just picking up bits of paint. So that's enough of the palette knife. I'm now going to get on to the other techniques. And this has to be one of my favourites for doing beautiful splashes. Again, you completely fill the brush. It's wet and I'm going into kind of a wettish, whitey grey, grey purple again. Completely fill those bristles. Now the wetter it is, the more of a splash you get. So you'll have to practice if you get one of these. And you can, it's like a bottle brush, but it's got one of these so you can put it in against it. So if you look at this lovely splash you get, whoa, look at that, gorgeous. So again, we're just going for things that give you that kind of vigour of splash. Don't do it towards you, you're going to fill your face with it. <laughs> I've done that so many times. And a nice subtle way of making splashes is to use a toothbrush and you cover that with white paint, completely right down to the base of the bristles and then you, anything, you can use anything hard but I can use a palette knife often or at the edge of a knife and hold it that way and you get a really beautiful soft spray. You can almost not see it against those other vigorous marks but that's a nice subtle way almost of adding a soft haze of the spray if you want to go into finer detail. But the most uh, beautiful splashes you get are off a brush. Now, if you get a big brush, you can do all sorts of different things with it. You can make that edge a little bit brighter. You can pull some things forward. You can suggest the light just hitting the top. You can make tiny little splashes with the edge. You can use it for all sorts of different things. I do like to do a lot of things with one brush, but my favourite thing is to completely fill it with wet paint and stand back. And I'm going to do those really dynamic splashes off the top then. And this is like that. And you really have to do that whip crack action. And you can see it flying up. Now, this is quite bright white because it's got to sit over those others. And I'm doing it at a different angle each time. But you've got to dare, really, splash, splash, choo, choo. and that really adds that dynamism. See, I've had to cover the um, legs on the tripod up because I'm not going to splash them. Down here you want some, you don't want it all over, but it's just lovely to, if you want to really get those dramatic splashes, really make it a wet mix on your brush. And I'm going to stand back and go, wow. And it's that final hard, it is like cracking a whip. And I want that sort of thing where it leaves those beautiful lines. 
So now you can see why I didn't do too much detail in the background. It really is just to sit these vigorous marks against. Now, we can come back and do more of those if we want. But a painting is all about working one thing against another. And I've got to do some of this sea foam. And I'm going to start with a pale blue and come over on white. And the sea foam gets dragged up and then it also churns over these undulations and it goes thinner and thicker and as it churns over them it describes the undulations in the sea. So I'm going to mix a very pale blue first because I'll come in with the white highlights after. So it's a pale blue mixed with a tiny bit of purple, the typical titanium white that I use for everything and maybe a tiny hint of burnt umber just to knock it back and make it subtle. So it's a wet mix that I'm using, it's not really thick paint and I'm going to start slowly because I know I'll to start with a tip so I'm wanting to do these sort of foamy suggestions where it kicks up and you can see where you've made these uh, marks where the light's hitting the sea and that suggests where the wave just slowly rises up and you can add to that suggestion by doing these foam marks by it. Now you can go quite carefully with this because you don't want to go too mad. And foam sort of goes thicker and thinner and churns round. I'm making sure that I describe these undulations of wave because it's one of the things that's going to make sense of what I've done underneath. And of course it crosses over and then it goes all fluffy and churny and I'm getting it bigger and bigger coming towards us. So at first it's like anything, it looks strange until you've done quite a bit of it. I'm making that slightly darker so I can come in. So I'll just darken the colour down with more purple and more blue. Because it was just sitting a bit bright. Now you can go a bit mad with this and I don't want too much of it. But it's certainly starts to look like the foam on the sea so I'm just sort of drifting it around a bit now and again I'm going for that looseness of mark so that we don't go all static and lose that bigger and this here is just suggesting how that foam sometimes gets dragged up the face of the wave and then back onto the flat surface of the sea. Now often on the top of these waves the foam can gather in a ridge so I know that from looking at it and then it drifts down again into the dip and gathers on a ridge and I'm trying to suggest that then dips down, gathers, dips down. If you make these motions it just starts to give the feeling of that wave on the surface of the water. I'll choose a size 4 rigger. That's a tiny one for detail. So I'm going to get a little bit paler so I'm using a lot more white but with still a tiny little bit of that blue mixed in. And now I'm going to start going along some of this that I've done and this is where the light just starts to hit it. Now the light can't hit that foam here so it doesn't need to go too pale. It can go a little bit paler in patches but it would actually be in the shadow so it's really just when it gets to here, so the light's coming over the wave and it's just hitting all these here. And that's how, again, you can suggest that all this is in shadow by suddenly, along that line, doing some of these foam highlights. Again, it's not absolute realism, but it is more of a suggestion and an impression of it. So I'm actually, so that I'm not being too careful, I'm holding this wet, white filled rigger by the tip so that I get more of this sort of mark. Now remember to keep it flat like this, don't kick it up, otherwise the perspective won't read correctly. So I'm just drifting along some of those marks I've already made, but suggesting highlights just where it's hitting there. So along the top, those undulations is where it's really going to be hitting. And you're starting to get that feel. It's not just sticking to one line and it's whizzing around because it's totally in motion and churning and I'm wanting to hint at some of that. 
Now some of these marks as I'm coming forward are bringing the eye out so it's getting larger and thicker as it comes towards us because again that gives a feeling of depth and it takes the eye into and through the painting. It's just like a little visual trick really. So this is all, all these little light marks. Yes, they're suggesting some of this foam and I might come in with a thicker paintbrush to make it look as though it's all bubbly in areas. But also they're suggesting that movement that I keep talking about and keeping it very lively and fresh. So here I'm just breaking them up and softening them because you do get, get patches of foam where it's really full and you can't see be beneath it and then you get patches where it's dragged out and it's thinner and it'll just make it look a little bit more realistic. I get some of those sort of woolly thick areas. So here I'm just thickening up some of these marks that come towards the front because of course the nearer they are the bigger they are and it gives that feeling of being down in amongst the water and looking at it from that angle and I may come in with some of those glazes I'll see how it it sits and then of course little bright patches in amongst that little churning motions and it's all adding to that whoosh, whoosh, that vigour and you can dip down in this dip with little marks so that it looks like it's going up and down and round and down so that's really the way you do it and do play around with these marks until you get what you want. I'm going to be coming in with more splash, a little bit of glaze under here to darken it, but first we'll let that dry. Before I do more foam highlights, I'm going to do a glaze of phthalo blue and a little touch of Dioxidine purple and sap green. So it's really just a deep rich colour, no white added because it's just a glaze you want to be able to see through it. And I'm just going to run it over this down here so that it's suggesting all this is still in the shadow of that wave. So that all those marks I've done underneath are still showing through but it's taken them down a notch so you can see how that suddenly looks like it's sitting in shadow. It's a really glazes uh, with acrylics and with watercolour there you've got to be careful not to uh, pull up the underpainting. Make are a lovely way of adding that depth to all the work you've done. You can add it within these waves so that each side of the wave suddenly looks like it's in shadow. Be careful not to overdo it, but at least it gives that feeling that it's dipping down and rising up. So it's really taking it back a, into a real depth. There we are. So suddenly, like any painting, as soon as you put darks in, it makes the brights look brighter. And that's a nice way of doing it. It's just that you've suddenly got contrast. I can take that almost up to the end of that... Uh, foam because of course that's all in dark and all of a sudden if you do these glazes bit by bit again keep a wet rag handy in case you go too far because you can wipe it off quickly but if you just build them up bit by bit you start to see what effect they have in suggesting shadow and depth and I think that's working quite nicely now because it's suddenly given it three dimensions. So with this foreground, I'm going back to my very thin rigger because we're about detail now and it's a size naught. So I'm dipping that in very wet white paint, holding it by the end again, and this time I'm bringing this forward, but in tiny little flips of foam and I'm letting it wiggle backwards and forwards and it's suggesting tiny little bright highlights on foam. It's a strange little action but I'm sort of, I'm almost in control but a little bit out of control and just letting this very wet paint flick off it over what I've already done. Now you can, pra obviously these things if you haven't done them, practice them on a bit of paper next to you. I sometimes have a bit of card here if I'm not sure. And again you're making marks like this. It's, it's little highlights catching that foam running over the water. 
and come and look towards the front. If you make all these little marks, again, it's vigour, it's foam, it's suggesting all sorts of things, it's bringing light into the picture. I'm going over to this side again. And you can play with this to your heart's content until it's right. I'm letting this little splashes slip off there. So that it still looks like it's churning down here and splashing around. If you want some definite splashes, just flick it off the end of your brush and that'll add again. It's almost like maybe it's tumbling on the shore here and it's creating splashes. So make those splashes. It's just all merging in with this. It makes sense because it's happening up there. You've got all this vigour, all those splashes, all these different little wiggly marks. It's suggestive, it's not ultra real realism, it's suggestive of all that action, all that motion, all that churning surf and that sort of excitement you get by the sea. Don't like that one, get your wet rag, that was me going a bit mad. So you see, if you quit with acrylics, you can just swipe it off the surface. So it lets you go a bit crazy and try things out, but you don't have to stick with it. So now we're going to be just tweaking and doing the final things to bring it all together. And I think we need a little bit more vigorous splash up here. Just add that final bit of drama. So I'm using quite a loaded brush getting something ready to wipe off if it goes wrong and here we go so it's just sitting against it like that see there you go it's just sitting against what i've already done but is an absolute final pure bright white because then you can see that what i've done although it looked white it's actually a soft blue because we want these absolute flying up feeling of bigger now, a little tip, if it's going in the wrong direction you want it to move, just turn the whole thing round and that might get a better, better kind of flick for you. And that seems to be working. If you do it a lot, you get a real emphasis in an area. And for me, that's probably, for this painting, about enough. And I think we'll call that finished. Well, thanks for looking in. I hope you enjoyed it. And remember, there's lots more techniques, inspirational ideas in Dynamic Seascapes. So, I hope to see you again. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.